16-year-old Jelesnogorsk resident Maria Yatsenko is an ordinary teenager. She had no special problems. Having finished ninth grade, the girl planned to enter a technical college. Everyone thought that she would settle down perfectly in life, so sociable, pretty. But no one knew what was troubling the girl inside. July 31st, 2022, 3.30 a.m. Maria sent a text message to an acquaintance. I just don't feel like living anymore. Just on the verge of getting wet just now. Just got knee-deep in water. I was stopped by my ex-boyfriend who I just sent, and he left. Just realistically, I don't see the point of living. Nobody appreciates. Nobody appreciates me. It's just my mom. My mom's fuming about me. She only calls me when she needs to. That's it. She never calls me. To ask how I'm doing, how I'm doing, never calls. The same grandmother I live with, the same grandmother I... We talk to her like we used to. I'm just standing by the river. My feet are just all wet. I'm all wet all over. My passport's all wet. Everything's wet. My phone, the steam room, everything's soaked. Because I'm completely soaked. Maybe those are the last words I'll ever say. Maybe not. I don't know. I just walked away from everybody. I don't know where... I don't know where I've gone. I don't know where I am at all. No, I don't want to go anywhere. Don't text me just this stuff. And now I'm just figuring out what I'm doing. Just everything that's going on here right now, I'm figuring it out. It's my decision, that's all. I'm just going to sit here and think about it. I'll just take a cab myself later. No, I'm not going anywhere home. I'm all Mova Kraj. And these were the last words of Maria Yatsenko. The girl did not contact anymore. On July 30th, 2022, it was the day of the city of Zhelesnogorsk. Maria told her grandmother, with whom she lived, that she was going for a walk with her friends. And when she didn't return late at night, the elderly woman started calling her. But the only response was, the phone is switched off or out of range. The woman's heart told her that something had happened to the child. So on the morning of July 31st, 2022, she contacted the police for help. The search for Maria was carried out by employees of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, volunteers and volunteers, and the investigative committee joined in. The first thing questioned her acquaintances, and they learned that the girl was last seen near the Club Tornado, located on the shore of a local lake in the park, and at night she sent voice messages in which she spoke about her depressed state. That was the message I included earlier. Operatives thought it was a suicide, so they called in the divers. That was the main theory at first. Methodically combed the territory of the city, divers examined the bottom of the local lake. Step by step, the police and IC reconstructed the picture of the last day, when the girl was seen alive and well. The survey of the lake did not give anything. Parents and friends hoped to the last that 16-year-old Maria would be found safe and sound. Daughter, my dear, I'm going crazy. Call me back, my dear, my beloved. I beg you to get in touch. I'm waiting for you so much. I'll hug you and never let you go again. I beg you to come home. I beg you. If someone who is close to our daughter, please, please, please make her come home. Get in touch with whoever and wherever she is. Mashulia, we are all waiting for you very much. Grandma, Grandpa, Dima, Dad, Polina is crying all the time. Yesterday I called an ambulance. Honey, let me know that you are alive. We are all begging you. Masha's mother wrote these heartbreaking words in despair on August 1st on the page of the search and rescue group Siberia in the social network Vicontacte. It was known that on July 31st, Maria went to her Vicontacte page at 3.30 a.m. when she sent a voice message. Apparently, that's why many of those who knew her tried to reach the girl through the social network and asked her to return home. Here, for example, what Anastasia Semina wrote to her. Mashenka, honey, please get in touch. Everyone is very much worried about you, miss you, and love you. Please write or call me, I promise. If you don't want to, no one will know. Let's talk. I'm sure I can help you. Anastasia even posted a prayer in the comments. 
but Hope died on August 2nd, 2022, at the repeated round of the lakeshore, the girl was found dead. She was lying in the woods near the water and was covered with earth. After Masha was found, the second department for investigation of especially important cases joined the investigation. In layman's terms, the big guys. We investigate serious and especially serious crimes, crimes committed against minors, high-profile cases. The fact that the work involves important does not mean that the leadership does not trust the city or district department to find a criminal, as people often think. It's just that these cases fall under our jurisdiction, explains investigator Yana Sirimbatova. The management created an investigative team. Its work was managed by the staff of the second department of the important and it included investigators from different cities and districts of the region, criminalists, employees of the main department of criminalistics from the Novosibirsk division. Dozens of police officers and experts worked constantly with the group. The work was carried out practically round the clock, and it really was. Many investigators and operatives had to move to Zheleznogorsk, living there for months, while the crime remained unsolved. To help find the criminal, experts from Moscow also came to help. They shared their experience gained in solving similar crimes and worked on the psychological profile of the criminal. Maria's body was immediately sent for expert examination. After the examination, other acts of a sexual nature, with violence to the victim and rape, were added to the article murder. The criminal left his genetic material, seminal fluid, on the body of the deceased. It would seem that everything is simple, check the database and the case is solved. But alas, it was not in the database. Genetic material is not fingerprints. The database through which a match can be determined is much smaller. So the group had a very big and monotonous job to find the only one among thousands of men. This work can be compared to circles diverging on water. First, the circle of possible suspects is formed from the closest people, all those who communicated and saw the murdered in the last hours before her death. Then, it expands. In parallel, investigators and operative officers checked many categories. Those who were on the lake, shore, and in the park. Those with criminal records. Those on various registers. Those who left the city. Those who worked on a rotational basis. And others says the subtleties of the investigator. There were several versions, including the one that one person could have raped and the other could have killed. And it was also investigated with special care. When there were suspects who could commit a terrible crime, and there were several, they were checked not only for genetic matches, but also thoroughly checked their routes of travel, alibis, the possibility of committing a crime, and used polygraph capabilities. The long months of work did not produce the result everyone was expecting. The killer was never caught. Just imagine, most men in the whole city were already suspected of the brutal massacre of a 16-year-old schoolgirl, because anyone could have been the culprit. A reward of 1,000 rubles was promised for help in catching the criminal. More than 8,000 men were checked. Most of them were understanding but there were also those who refused to provide samples with whom explanatory work was carried out. Thanks to such a large coverage, about a dozen old crimes were solved. But the man needed here and now was never found. But then suddenly, when the samples received from students of one of the local universities were checked, a 100% match of genetic material was found. The suspect, named Yevgeny Anisiforov, is a student at the Siberian Fire and Rescue Academy of the State Fire and Rescue Service of the Ministry of Emergency Situations of Russia and was detained right in the classroom. Was it possible to find him earlier? It is difficult to say. In such cases, when it was not possible to find the criminal on hot traces, it is necessary to be patient, we can say assiduous, to systematically check everyone and not to miss one, perhaps the one who was searched for. This is very difficult, painstaking, and sometimes monotonous work. 
In this situation, we must give credit to all the employees involved in solving the crime, for their patience, the ability to encourage each other, as it is very difficult to keep a high pace of work in conditions when the final result may be very distant, says Yana Sirimbatova. But not only the genetic material became a confirmation of the crime. During the search in the 20-year-old's apartment, a bag, a vape, and Maria's passport were found. Frankly, we were surprised why he kept his victim's passport all this time. The divers had searched the bottom of the lake several times to see if Maria's belongings had been dumped there, but to no avail. That the perpetrator took the victim's belongings, we assumed, but that he would keep them with him, especially the passport, was a surprise. Why would he keep it? As a trophy? Maybe. He himself doesn't explain why he did it. The 20-year-old boy did not refuse. He confessed to everything at once. When asked why he killed and raped the girl, he answered during interrogation that he was drunk. He didn't realize what he was doing. He saw a beautiful, unknown girl. His head went blank. He grabbed a stone and attacked her from behind, then did his dirty work and buried the dead schoolgirl. The guy appeared before the investigation as a clean slate. He had never been brought to responsibility, had a positive characterization from all sides, was engaged in sports. But during the investigation, it turned out that everything was not so clean. Shortly before the murder of Masha, he attacked the girl in the same park and again under alcohol. Fortunately, he did not manage to hurt the girl. She managed to escape. And during the search of his apartment, investigators found several other people's cell phones. It turned out that he had stolen them. Soon, the trial began. The prosecutor noted the public danger of the crimes, daring, cruel, out of the ordinary. Aggravating circumstance asked to recognize the commission of crimes in a state of alcoholic intoxication, stated in the message of the supervisory body. The totality of data on the personality of Anisiforov mitigating and aggravating circumstances, the actual circumstances under which the attack on a minor and deprivation of her life took place, indicate that Anisiforov represents an exceptional danger to society. The prosecutor's office noted that Anisiforov pleaded guilty and helped investigate the case, so he was asked for 23 years in a high-security colony and two years of restricted freedom, while earlier he was asked for life imprisonment. In his last word, the former Emmercom cadet apologized to the victims. Sentencing will take place on April 18, 2024.